Jacob Burton here from StellaCulinary.com and in this video, if you're a breadhead who likes to bake a lot of sourdough breads, I'm going to answer a question that I get all the time. That's how do I take a commercial uh, yeast recipe, a commercially leavened dough using uh, instant or active dry yeast and convert that into being able to le uh, leaven it with a sourdough starter. Now, once you understand how to do this, it's going to open up a whole wide world of bread recipes and possibilities for you because you can then use all these other bread recipes that have already are known to produce great bread and use them as a template to create your own sourdough bread. Now, before we go any further, it's uh, very important for you to understand that this video is going to be incumbent upon you understanding a couple of things. Number one, the baker's percentage, and number two, the basics outlined in our audio podcast when we discuss bread. So if you haven't listened to the four pillars of bread, if you haven't listened to our series on uh, uh, pre-ferments and sourdough starters and how to bake sourdough bread, then hit the pause button now and come back to this video uh, because you need to understand it before we can get into this or else this video would be like three hours long just to lay out all the you know base fundamental information that you need to understand. So to convert uh, to a sourdough starter, a, a commercial yeast recipe, let's assume for a second that we have the following uh, recipe that we're using. And it's going to be 900 grams flour, 600 grams water, 10 grams salt, and yeast. Now notice how I didn't give an actual value for the yeast. And that's because the amount of yeast that you have in any given bread dough is dependent upon how long you want to take for that bread dough to ferment. So in general terms, for every 1,000 grams, I know I have 900 here, but for every 1,000 grams of flour you start off with with any given bread recipe, if you add 5 to 7 grams, which is the equivalent of a normal commercial pa size of packet yeast that you get at your supermarket, 5 to 7 grams of that commercial active dry or instant dry yeast will make this bread recipe rise uh, in a two hour bulk fermentation and a one hour proof and, and then you bake. Now that's the fastest that you ever wanna go through the bread baking process because even then you're still kind of sacrificing a little bit of flavor. So how much sourdough starter do we add to any given recipe? Well, the same can be said as the yeast, as far as it doesn't really matter how much sourdough starter you actually add to the recipe, it's all dependent upon how long you want that bread to ferment for. Now, as we talked about in episode 22 of the Cell Culinary School podcast, we talked all about how delaying fermentation will build up acids uh, that can make your sourdough loaf more starter, but it can also diminish the structure of your loaf. So just keep that in the back of your mind where you can delay fermentation, you can add a smaller amount of your starter up front, draw out that fermentation process, which is going to build up more acid eventually and yield a more sour loaf. But for argument's sake, for right now, let's just say we have a commercial bread dough recipe like this. And we say to ourselves, well, I would really like to switch this to sourdough. Because I know that this recipe looks delicious, or maybe I made it a few times, and it works well. And it normally takes a two-hour bulk fermentation, a one-hour proof. But I know that if I add a sourdough starter pre-ferment, or a sourdough mother, or levan, uh, to this recipe instead of my yeast, then that's already going to put me ahead of the curve. So I'm going to have a better result, even if I bake this in one day. So if you want to get your sourdough bread done in one day's time, uh, that's kind of close to this time frame, the fast that it usually occurs is about a three to four hour bulk fermentation and in a one and a half to two hour proofing stage. And the way that you do that is by making one third of your flour come from your starter. Now we'll talk about what that means here in a second, but your poolish sourdough starter is 100% hydration, and this is what we're always working with, okay? This is our working sourdough starter. Uh, why This is one I taught you how to make in this uh, Cell Culinary School podcast, and this is the one that we use on an ongoing basis. It's just really easy uh, when you're doing uh, these sort of conversions, and I just prefer to have a poolish sourdough starter. So the night before, you always feed your starter, and you feed your starter by dumping out at least half and then feeding that same amount back in or dumping out all and then feeding in the amount that you need to leaven your next loaf of bread. So think back to episode 22 when we talked about the actual sourdough bread baking process in the technique segment of that audio podcast. We talked about the two ways to get your starter going the night before because remember you need an active starter to leaven this loaf of bread. 
So the night before you take your active starter, if you dump out half and then you feed half back into your pool of starter, then you're going to have more acidic acid and lactic acid already in that starter, so it's gonna give you a more sour loaf. So if you want a more sour loaf, I would go this method. You can also, after it ferments at, at room temperature for a couple hours, after you've dumped out half and fed half back in, you see some bubbles go and you can retard fermentation in your refrigerator, which is going to up the, or not up, it's going to cancel out a lot of the lactic acid production and then allow more acidic acid production um, in that starter. So it's gonna give you, again, a more sour loaf. Now, if you want a more floral, sweet loaf that still has the complexity of a sourdough starter, but not necessarily the sourness, maybe you're making like a white um, sandwich bread, or maybe you're making uh, a sort of, I mean, you can do like a sourdough cola, you could do all sorts of stuff with this, and you don't want an overbearing sour flavor. I like to make sourdough dinner rolls, right? And I'll use the sourdough starter as my natural event, which is going to give it a more uh, complex flavor but I'm not going to have a total sour flavor uh, in those dinner rolls. So I'll use this method where I dump out all my starter. The starter that clings to the bottom of the sides of my container is allowed to uh, stay in that container. And I feed back in whatever I need to leaven this loaf of bread and then some. So again, how much do I need to leaven this loaf of bread? Well, to get it done in a four hour bulk fermentation and a one to two hour proof, you're going to need one third of your total flour uh, in that recipe to come from your pool of starter. Now, obviously, the more sourdough starter we use, the faster this process will go, and the less sourdough starter we use, the slower the process will go. But again, the reason why we're using the sourdough starter in the first place isn't to speed up the process, it's to add complexity of flavor to this bread formulation. So if you take and you add a bunch of sourdough starter uh, to this recipe, and you throw off your ratios more than this, which I'm gonna write out here in a second, and then you're gonna have issues with flavor, you're probably gonna have issues with structural integrity because you're gonna to have too much acid built up in the loaf, so you get the idea. So our new formula for this, all right, because we're using a poolish sourdough starter, let's write down the poolish amount first, which is going to be 600 grams. So remember, because we're using a poolish sourdough starter, and we want 300 grams of our flour, to come from our starter to make this new formula, then we know that we're gonna need 600 grams of poolish because a poolish is what? It's 100% hydration. So in this 600 grams of poolish sourdough starter, we're gonna have 300 grams of flour and 300 grams of water. So now all that's required, because we know we have the proper amount to get one third to go through a three to four hour bulk fermentation and one to two hour proof to convert this commercial yeast recipe. All that we need to do now is some simple subtraction because we already know the values of the flour and water in our poolish sourdough starter. So our 900 grams of flour now becomes 600 grams of flour. Our water goes from 600 grams to 300 grams and our salt ratio stays the same. Now obviously because we have the yeast already contained within our poolish pre-ferment or our poolish sourdough starter, we no longer need the yeast. So again, you can see it's actually pretty simple now that you kind of understand just the framing of, it's all about time frame. So you can take any recipe that calls for bread, omit the actual yeast itself, and leaven with just a little pinch of, of your sourdough starter, and you're good to go. Now, it's going to take longer. But also, too, think about how much sourdough starter we used here, right, in this approach where we dump out all the starter of the night before and we feed it back in. Now, remember back to our sourdough starters and pre-ferments episode where I talked about how you can use a pre-ferment, where it's a you know, mixture of flour, water, and a little bit of yeast. And you always do a poolish. Well, not always, but you I recommended you do a poolish because it's easier. And you let that ferment overnight, right? Well, instead of using the yeast, you can do a sourdough starter, but just in the form of a small pinch. And if you listen back to that, that episode where we talk about how to use those pre-ferments, you can basically take this recipe right here and you can say, okay, well, instead of going through this and making it all in one day, I'm just going to use my sourdough starter as part of my pre-ferment to inoculate instead of the commercial yeast. And I remember Jacob said, well, you can use about one quarter to one third or to one half of your pre 
of your flour and water in your recipe for any given pre-ferment. So what we would do then, so again, we, so we have 900 grams flour, 600 grams water. You can do a poolish sourdough starter by drawing out 450 grams of flour and 450 grams of water, and then just a pinch of sourdough starter. So you literally just dip your fingers into your sourdough starter, you know, pull off whatever, you know, three or four fingers can hold, and then drop it in to your 450 grams of water and 450 grams of flour from this recipe up here. So you would treat this just like a pre-ferment like we talked about in episode 21, which this makes it even easier to convert commercial yeast recipes. So again, you're just pulling off a given amount of flour and water and you're mixing them together and knocking that with your sourdough starter that's already active and you're using that as a pre-ferment. You go to bed, you wake up the next day, now you're ready to bake this bread. And you've almost, just by understanding the concept of a pre-ferment and using the poolish instead of a commercial yeast, you've almost just mindlessly made the, that conversion without even having to do any math. And then all you have to do is the next day you have to subtract uh, 450 from 900 grams, which is gonna give you 450, and then 450 from 600 grams, which is going to give you 150. So again, the next day, you already have your 100% hydration poolish sourdough starter, and you just add the remainder of the flour, water, and salt to this recipe. You take it through a three hour bulk fermentation, one to two hour proofing stage, and bada boom, you have a great loaf of sourdough bread. Or a recipe that used to be uh, leavened by commercial yeast, now utilizing a sourdough starter. So here you have two major methods that you can use. Uh, if you have any questions on this, uh, feel free to go ahead and just post them in the comment section uh, right underneath this video. But this is gonna give you a good starting line for taking any commercial yeast recipe out there and turning it into a sourdough leaven recipe. Now, one thing that I will warn you of, which you should have a cursory knowledge about if you listen to our Four Pillars of Bread audio podcast, is that sourdough yeast doesn't do well in high sugar environments. In fact, most commercial yeast doesn't do uh, well in high sugar environments. They actually have a special kind of yeast that are used for really high sugar breads. Uh, so if you're trying to make a, a bread dough recipe with say more than 10% sugar in it, which is gonna give you a pretty sweet bread, uh, then you're gonna have issues with the sourdough yeast leavening it. But anything with 10% uh, or below uh, sugar content is fair game. So bake on.